We live yet? All right, guys, I think we're live. Welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. We're going to be going over our Memorial Day open house, which is coming up this Monday from 8 to 4. Hey, guys, I'm Tim. Smash that like button as always. We're going to give you some key insights from today uh, for this uh, upcoming open house that's on Memorial Day. So we're going to tell you some secrets of some cool plants that will be out there. We're going to discuss a few things with Fun Flower Friday. And, guys, it's just always to get you all in this live chat and start answering any questions you all might have about the open house or plants coming forward as well. All right, guys, I just hopped in that live chat. You can also throw your Japanese maple and plant-related questions in the chat, and we'll be getting to those as we can as well. We love answering any plant-related questions we can help with, uh, so we'll be glad to hop in there. So our open house is going to be uh, 529, so that's this Monday, Memorial Day of 2023. It's going to be from 8 to 4. Uh, I think we're not holding back any stops here, guys. We've got some great stuff ready for you for the Memorial Day open house. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to be touring. Uh, we'll have a tour available for my parents' garden at uh, Maplewood Gardens. They are doing some road construction there potentially. <laughs> so they, they put up some signs yesterday that say road construction, but I, I, I asked them and they're not going to be doing any road construction on Memorial Day since the state's off. Uh, so hopefully it won't be too tore up, but we will not be touring the Hillstone Arboretum due to some construction my uncle has going on. Uh, we will be touring the Maplewood Gardens. And, of course, the greenhouses will be open here at Mr. Maple. So there will be some really good things to see. Uh, there's some phenomenal plants. I don't think we've ever had this many cool plants uh, up here at the top of the nursery. So the top of the nursery is the area that's going to be open. Uh, you'll be able to enter from the uh, Oak Grove Roadside into the nursery. Uh, it'll be a uh, similar setup to last year or the spring open house if you've attended one of our events before. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, though. I think we have at least three more greenhouses of material up here than we had before. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of really good stuff. And guys, there's actually more 10 gallons than we had at the spring open house. And guys, you all asked last week, we have a food truck. <laughs> so guys, we've got a really good food truck that's going to be serving both breakfast and it will also be serving lunch as well. So you can stay there all day. Uh, it's a really awesome food truck that's got a lot of really good biscuits and a lot of really neat menu items. Yeah, I'll break that down completely as we get more people in the chat too. Uh, we'll go over briefly a little bit this morning, our Fun Flower Friday. Uh, we're going to, again, be answering any plant questions you have. You can throw them into that live chat. I've got that up in front of me. Uh, we'll be going through there and also answering your questions and kind of giving you the checklist to get ready for the Mr. Maple Open House that's happening this Monday. Uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, we anticipate 700 plus. Last year we had 750 people. Uh, we might have a chance of rain. Looks like that keeps moving. So it looks like that keeps moving, which is going to be good. And the chances are low right now. But uh, it could be a chance of rain, so bring your raincoat. We'll be here rain or shine uh, Monday from, again, from 8 to uh, 4. And uh, those Maple Maniacs, especially Michael James, guys, they get to the gate about 6 a.m. So <laughs> bear with us. Uh, we'll be opening up at 8 a.m. either way. And as Tim mentioned, we do have a food truck here. It's going to be serving breakfast this time. I think that's going to be a great way to do it. I know a bulk of our people are in here between the 8 and the 12 o'clock time frame, and I wanted to make sure we had something here to you know, to get you some food. If you're trying to come to us first thing to get first in line, we don't want you to miss out on breakfast, so you can do some shopping. Uh, we will have a hold area, so our wives will be having a hold area. Uh, you'll be able to tag plants, take them to the hold area. That way you're not having to carry them around with you. Now, one reminder and one hiccup I think we did have last year, some people tagged plants and then walked away from them. So if you tag a plant, make sure you get it to one of my employees. We won't be able to find every plant in every greenhouse with a tag on them. So the next step after you tag a plant with your number is make sure to hand that to a Mr. Maple employee, and they'll get it down to the hold area and put it in your pile and have everything set for you. Uh, if you put a sticker on it but you leave it in a greenhouse, there's no way of knowing uh, if that was set back. In fact, they'll assume that didn't get pulled. So make sure to get that to somebody. We'll have a whole staff here in Mr. Maple shirts walking around, ready with carts. we got more carts this time, so they'll be taking any of your plants you need down to that holding area so you can keep shopping or, or grabbing some uh, some breakfast. We've got the the groovy grease wagon is going to be here, and uh, they have uh, phenomenal food. Uh, they're friends with Jess and Kate, so they're going to have a ton of cool stuff for you guys. Uh, I actually just talked to Clark yesterday, the owner. 
Uh, he's got a big mix of stuff from French toast sticks, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits, uh, fried chicken biscuits, chorizo egg tacos, a whole bunch of appetizers for lunch. He's got a ton of different types of tacos from pork, chicken, barbacoa, buffalo cauliflower. He also serves smash burgers and chicken sandwiches. So uh, from everything I've heard, the Groovy Grease Wagon has some phenomenal food. I know Jess and Kate were really high on it, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we're looking forward to that, guys. It's going to be a really good time. Uh, so we will have breakfast as well as lunch. So if you're uh, somebody who's here all day, you know, don't fret. We got you covered. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had something there. So, you know, you've got the options. Now, there's going to be some phenomenal plants here uh, on Memorial Day as well. I mentioned we have more uh, 10 gallons than ever before. So we're going to have a ton of 10 gallons in stock. Welcome back to Tim. <laughs> We're going to have a ton of 10 gallons in stock here. Uh, there's some rare Acer species that we've never offered before in 10 gallons. So if you're a maple collector and you like the Acer species, there's going to be some really cool stuff there that's never before been listed on Mr. Maple, uh, in especially in 10-gallon type sizes. So a lot going on there for sure. Hey, guys. Uh, the email's just now going out. So... We actually missed hitting the send button on that, so we're sending that out right now. So it just come through a little late for Fun Flower <laughs> Friday. That's one of the things I was Always checking on. Always a fun day here at Mr. Maple. We got <laughs> stuff going on. You see us diving out during the live feed, guys. But, yeah, that one's headed out. So we're going to have a, a really good Fun Flower Friday for you here today. That should be launching at 10 a.m. Bear with us if your email shows up at 45 till. We've got a lot of people on that email list now, so it takes a while to get our email list out to everybody. We try to start it a little bit before nine just because it takes a long time to email that many people. So I had a couple questions here in the chat. I'll go ahead and get to a few of those too. Um, I know I had one about sun requirements here. What is the appropriate light requirements from Bruce Burton? Shout out to Bruce Burton for Purple Ghost in Zone 7B, Southeast Tennessee. So, you know, zones really, I always say this, but they're rated on cold hardiness, not really on the heat index. Uh, Southwest Tennessee can get a pretty good heat index. Purple ghosts can grow in full sun in Zone 7 Tennessee. It will wash out a little quicker. If you can give it some late-day shade, you'll hold some of the crazier purple shades later into the season. Uh, but but it can handle that for sure without a lot of burn, especially once established. It is a, a very durable tree. I've seen it up to Zone 8 in sun, um, but you do want to give it a little bit more late-day shade, typically for its optimal color patterns. You'll get some high-intensity spring colors, but they will wash out quicker in a full sun setting uh, in, that, in that kind of heat. So if you have any other questions, keep dropping them in the chat. Uh, here's another question I have here uh, on Ornatum. They said it's been in the ground about three weeks and has a significant amount of wind burn. What should I be doing about it? Well, we mentioned this before, but wind burn kind of treated a little bit like frost damage. Um, Check it out. Don't be trimming any windburn off. Sometimes windburn is frost damage, and it fools us because it looks like windburn. Um, make sure to give it a light liquid fertilizer. That'll help uh, boost things up. You only want to do a liquid fertilizer about every two weeks minimally. Make sure going forward not to be overwatering. You know, our inclination is when you have some burn foliage to overwater. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes what looks like windburn can be frost, even in some colder areas. Uh, if it is truly windburn, just be careful. Make sure it's not staying uh, too wet going forward. Yeah, Tim took off running for the food truck. You're right. He might be doing his uh, his early morning email dance here in a minute for you guys. I got to check one more thing. Maple Maniac stopping at my house to get some coffee. We will have some coffee here for Memorial Day. Uh, talk to everybody. They definitely will have some coffee uh, at the Groovy Grease Wagon. Uh, we're not going to have a band this year. Jess uh, and Kate, who are members of Bad Rabbit, that's now changed to the Carolina Drifters is their new name. Uh, they played for us last year. They have a family reunion going on, so they'll be traveling to a family reunion. Uh, maybe next time we can get them to get involved again and have the uh, the band here. I uh, really appreciate all you guys supporting them. They have, you know, an awesome band uh, along with Sean. Sean's the guy playing all his awesome guitar intros in our podcast, you guys hear. Uh, but we're going to have some really cool stuff. I'll tell you some of the surprises. Uh, since I don't have Tim here to stop me, I'll start spilling the beans, guys. How about that? Uh, I'll tell you about some of the things we're bringing up. Uh, of course, we just recently, not too long ago, listed Firefly. So I'm going to have Fireflies up. Not a huge number. We have to save some for the mail order side, but I will be bringing some Fireflies up. I have uh, procured for your 
uh, open house fun, a few things. Oh, oh, Tim's back. He's going to try to stop me from telling you all the good stuff. No. Now, these won't be in large numbers, guys. They'll be in smaller numbers. Uh, there might not even be enough for everyone here, obviously. So these will be first come, first serve. These items will also be only for people attending our open house. So we will not be able to get an item for you and ship it to somebody else uh, of these items. So if you're shopping for somebody else, some of our open house exclusives will just be that. There'll be one per customer. I'm pretty strict on that this time on these on this list. And uh, there'll be, uh, you know, things that if you're there in person, feel free to pick one up. We won't be able to ship that to somebody else not here, though. There may only be 10 to 20 of, of each of these. Last year we had, or in the spring we had Bazinga, and we had some get shipped to people, but there were a few people here in person that missed out on them. And uh, we just want people that are buying plane tickets and coming in to, you know, have first option at that. Uh, so, again, Firefly, that was just on a recent 10 at 10. That's a really cool plant that we're going to be dropping in some smaller numbers. Uh, we actually have decent numbers in that one. Catalina Yetsabusa, that's the variegated. Uh, kind of has those crazy prawns over top of it. Angel the Prince, I'm going to be bringing some of those up. They'll be in limited numbers. There'll be some Bella in the greenhouses as well. Uh, one called Nemo, guys. That's a Makawa type you haven't seen before. Very limited numbers on that one. It's an orange. Yeah, it's a really bright orange Makawa type we've been grafting. Guys, for the first time, we're going to be bringing up some Blush and Beauty. So that's that Acer Japonicum. Uh, again, those will be in limited numbers and only for pickup here at Open House. There'll be some Jade Dragons, again, in limited numbers. Lily pad. So we're going to have some lily pads up here for you guys. And this isn't everything. These are just some things I want to tell you to get hyped. There'll be some more surprises beside this. Uh, Yellow Cascade. I know a lot of people have been asking about that one coming back. We're going to have that one up here. Ryu Goo. Now that's a variegated dwarf. Gets kind of some really interesting flaking over top of it. Uh, again, now, you know, if you miss out on these, they're going to be in limited numbers. And they'll be first come, first serve. One cultivar of some of these per person. Uh... Ramona. Now, that's one you don't even know about. It's on an upcoming <laughs> 10 at 10. Now, Ramona is a killer plant. It's got like this bright orange new growth when it leaves out in the spring. It's kind of green during the spring after that, which is the least eventful time. During the summer months, you get like this crazy yellow kind of color on the older growth with like a pink orange new growth over top of that. So it's a think Katsura X orange dream. I mean, that that's kind of what you It'd get. It'd be a like, really killer uh companion to Kristen star. Like, I think that's one of the ones I'm yeah. going to plant near it with Mila, like the colors you get some soft yellows at some points too, with some pink new growth and man, it's, it's a it summer just keeps changing. It's a summer to late summer Japanese maple that rocks it out during that time of the year. The spring interest is really good with the, the spring like pink orange, but it goes to a green. So like late spring, you're like, Oh, it's not that eventful. And then like late spring, early summer, late summer, early fall. This plant is just amazing. Uh, I know we're going to have some Blackbeard's Gold, uh, one of the things we haven't listed in a little while on our website here for a purchase available. We're going to also have some Mystic Makawas, some Maydays in limited numbers. Again, you online folks, don't kill me. We'll be bringing all those back. Uh, but we do want to have some cool stuff available here. Hot Blonde and Radiant will also be available in smaller numbers uh, at our open house. And, guys, this is just to name a few of the hot ticket items. There are more... Japanese maples up here than ever before at our open houses. I know we keep saying that. It's really true. Uh, we've got more houses up. We've got more houses full. And we keep bringing up all the plants from down low as they're finishing off. Man, my back's hurting from carrying you all morning, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make up for it. He, he can help me at open house. But uh, there's there's plenty more than this, guys. That This is just uh, a small example. You know, Some of the hot ticket items will definitely be made a and Mystic, and Nemo, which is an orange spring color we've been evaluating here. Um, they'll be in a mix of houses, so there's plenty of new things up here. We are going to have some Blush and Beauties in limited numbers, so be ready for those guys. Uh, there's some really crazy stuff, though. The, if, you're, if you're looking for Japanese maples, we want this to be the place for you to find them, and we want this event to be our premier event of the year where there's lots of excitement, and, you know, we, we love it. I mean, we're kids in a candy store. We want you to have that Willy Wonka feel where you walked into the factory, and uh, we want it to be a world of pure imagination here for you, especially during open house. But we're going to have limited numbers on that. There's going to be some really cool 10 gallons as well. Uh, just to break it down for you, you saw that cultivar highlight. There's only a few left, but we will have some 10-gallon carnival. We will have some 10-gallon, get this one, guys, and they're 10-foot tall, 9 to 10-foot tall, 
Acer Japonicum Aka Amote. <laughs> yeah, those that, things are killer. That's actually correct. There'll be some 10 gallons of that here in person uh, available. Uh, I won't, I'm halfway tempted to steal them all back. They're actually 15 plants. gallons. They're massive. Yeah. Um, and there's also some 15-gallon Acer Tenuifolium, uh, some cool species plants. And just to add to the 10-gallon list, I mean, there's just so many awesome plants out there. And there's some plants that may not even be on the website, too. I think there's a few we haven't quite listed that are out there of some large japonicum types. Yeah, there's tons of cool things. Um, so a lot of surprises there in the 10 gallons. We'll have some Shishikashira 10 gallons, uh, some Summer Gold 10 gallons. You can pair those amazingly with your Purple Ghost we'll have in 10s. There's a ton of neat stuff, guys. Uh, again, more than we had at our spring open house, if that's even possible. I see someone saying, can it fit in a smart car? If you're coming to Mr. Maple Open House, you probably should just bring something bigger than a smart car. <laughs> we got a lot of yeah, good plants. You'd be surprised. Uh, I, I once sold a guy at the farmer's market a uh, like a 10-gallon fire glow, and I didn't help him load it. The guy was super nice. I helped him talk to him the whole time there in the Asheville farmer's market. We don't do those shows anymore, but we used to do a lot of farmer's markets. And uh, I went to go get some lunch. So I left mom and dad and Tim in the booth, went to go pick everybody up lunch. And I got on the interstate right behind the guy with the 10 gallon fire glow sitting in the passenger seat of his convertible Miata. It's oh. like, it's like he had a wind sail coming down the interstate. I was like, Oh no, there's not going to be any foliage left. So bring uh, a tarp. If you're going to have an open bed truck, that's a great way. Once we're in leaf right now, uh, everything we have here is in leaf. So you want to protect foliage inside of a vehicle or bring a tarp. It's a great way to be prepared. If you're picking up bigger material with a truck. So, tons of cool stuff. Another question here, can Dragon Master or Golden Falls take afternoon sun in New Jersey? Dragon Master, I would recommend late day shade on. Sometimes Golden Falls can be a little more sun tolerant in some of those higher heat areas. I think in South Jersey, you'd be okay with Golden Falls, but it's good to experiment with that one. Any of your yellows and pinks, I always typically recommend more late day shade. Golden Falls in Zone 6B for me has done fairly well in full sun uh, once established. So, uh, I think the Golden Falls would be your better bet for a full sun environment. I think the Dragon Master is a little more dramatic in the color, but it does need some more protection. So again, keep throwing any questions you have here in the uh, in the chat. Um, possibly some Noel and Allen's Gold. I got to go check that set. Somebody's asking about Allen's Gold. There is a set in the works of Allen's Gold that's a fairly good size set. Y'all probably saw the short Brian dropped on that one. Uh, so there, there is a nice size set going. I'll have to check them guys and see if they're ready enough. That's the honest answer. I, I did have that one tentatively marked to possibly bring some up if they're ready, but, uh, it really just depends on how finished they are. I like things to be good and rooted in before we bring them up for open house. So Styrax Japonicus Snowdrops is coming on today's fun flyer Friday. I decided to bring that up. It's a selection by Talon Buckholtz. It's a dwarf Styrax with a compact shape, covers itself in white, uh, flowers, those snowbells. Uh, pretty awesome plant getting listed today. We have those both available as low graphs and high graphs. Most of the high graphs are grafted about 10 to 14 inches up. Um, but two really, that's a really cool plant in two different styles that's hitting the Fun Flower Friday today. I know that email went a little late, so I'll give you a heads up on that one. That's one that you really should watch out for. To me, it's one of my favorite things getting listed today. Uh, the next thing that's getting listed today that's pretty awesome is Amagasa. It's a vivid red flowering Satsuki Azalea. Um, it's bright, bright, bright red. The Satsuki Azaleas dwarf compact, stay sm in small spaces, and bloom in the summer months. Someone's asked if there's going to be any Kristen Star uh, or Yamamiji. Uh, there will be some peaches and cream. I saw some of those in there today. Uh, Kristen Star, I need to check. There's a, a nice size set coming on. Similar to the Allen's Gold, I just need to check and make sure they're rooted there's, in. There's a set of them, I think, in one of the houses. Already, Bug, already Bug up Tim, top. he's got the photographic memory where all the where uh, all the already up top. Are. There's already some Ramona, and there's already some Kristen Star. I and, wish they had had, the and they're in the house near each other. I wish I'd had the uh, the Carolina Drifters here this year. Uh, unfortunately, Jess and Kate, and fortunately for them, they have a family reunion, so we won't have them playing. But you can check them out anytime. Check out the Carolina Drifters; they're awesome people. Uh, hopefully we can get them in an upcoming event again. That that was just the most fun. I did look at some other people, and I looked at bringing in some bands, and the honest answer is they just weren't as good. I like the Carolina Drifters. I was like, you know, if we're not having them, I don't know if we're going to have somebody else. So we looked at some other options. 
Uh, but I think we'll just we'll just wait for next time when they can be here. We're going to have a ton going on anyway, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and maybe we can get them back again. That was so much fun. Uh, Acer Pseudosimoldianum cultivars in the works. Yes, lots. In fact, a um, little, uh, little uh, behind-the-scenes thing, we have our own series of Seaboldianum and Pseudosimoldianum we're developing here. Yeah, we've got lace leaves, uh, red uprights, ones with bark interest. Uh, a lot of pseudosibolianums coming out. I haven't, we haven't sort of put a name on our series yet, but it'll basically be our cold version of the Heat Seeker series. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot more of those that we're currently evaluating than we are of the olive rainum. Guys, when you get here to open house, uh, come by uh, the the checkout area, grab a name tag. I'm going to bring some name tags down for everybody. And if you if you didn't get a chance, put your uh, your YouTube name on there too. So I'd love to know who some of you guys are as long as you don't have expletives in your name. But I'd love to know who some of you guys are. Uh, put your name on there and put your YouTube name. That way we can put a face with the, the name sometimes. There's people that I had no idea they were the same person. So it was so funny last time at our spring open house, people are walking up to me and they're like, you know what, my screen name's this. And I'm like, I would never put that together. So that's a fun way. And, and that's also fun because other people in the chat will see your uh, your name and your regular name and then spark up conversations. So guys, Two other plants come into Funflower Friday today. Hydrangea Nico Blue. That's a classic blue. That's one of the bluest. Uh, that's one of the most popular ones used for cut flowers. Uh, and then we've also got Azalea Canary Isles, which is a yellow Eugene Aromi uh, hybrid that is just a light colored uh, hybrid that was hybridized with a Nap Hill hybrid, which means it's pretty cold tolerant with an Australian, which gives it some good vigor. So it's going to establish easy out in the landscape. Um, get some really large flowers with some good-sized trusses to it as well. Guys, if you see the Maple Maniac running around, follow that guy. He, he, he's, he's like a bloodhound sniffing all the good stuff. He knows where all the goods are at. It, <laughs> <laughs> people asking about where things are at. Uh, there, you know, We're going to have an awesome staff here to show you around. Sean's going to be here. Uh, Brian, of course, is going to be here. We're going to have our whole staff here, Elizabeth. And so many different people that know are knowledgeable on where plants are located. And so if there are things you're looking for, you can come up to some of the Mr. Maple staff here and say, hey, I'm interested in finding this, and we can get you in the right direction. I know a lot of people had questions for me before about how crazy is it. And it is a little crazy. I mean, there we had 750 people here last time. It does get a little crazy. It does have a little bit of Black Friday vibes to it. But our place is big, so you're not going to feel crowded. You're not going to be in a rush. There's so many places so spread out. We're going to have close to 20 greenhouses open. So there's plenty of room to go into different places and look around and not feel overwhelmed with the amount of people here. That said, be patient with us at checkout. There will be a good size line at checkout. Our wives and our staff will be working to, to make sure that goes as seamlessly as possible. And I think we've done a really good job in past. Uh, if people were here in the spring, they'll tell you that everything moves very efficiently. We've got a very organized staff that does a very good job at getting people uh, to where they need to be and, and things efficiently. And I'll tell you, there's no one greenhouse this time that'll have all the cool stuff. Uh, there's going to be tons of cool stuff. We're going to make you run around. It's in a lot <laughs> of different houses. So you're going to have to spend some time walking through the houses because there's cool stuff in so many different houses when you look around. I mean, I was walking around trying to make sure we were pulling all of our stock plants out. Um, that's always my goal is to go make sure that there's nothing that I'm not supposed to sell still around at the top of the hey, nursery. Tim, what, what size are those Peve starfish? Oh, those, those are in six or seven gallons. Yeah. There's some, there's some over six foot Peve starfish. There's some six to seven gallon gossamer. There will also be some six to seven gallon size strawberry spring. So guys, there's some crazy stuff. Uh, well, our two gallon house will be available this time. It wasn't before. Uh, there's a lot of neat things in there as well. So, guys, one of the crepe myrtles that has the red foliage with the white blooms, ebony and ivory, that's coming back. And we're also having Carolina Midnight, which is one of the purple-leafed lower pedlums with, like, that bright, bright, bright pink-red blooms to it. It's just a, such a heavy bloomer. Um, Carolina Midnight just has those really nice tassel flowers. Um it's a, it's probably one of the most heavily blooming selections of the Laura Pedlums. Andy asked if we're going to have any larger butterfly. I don't think we'll have any in big sizes this time. I haven't seen any around. Never say never. I find things here every day that I don't know we have. That's kind of the nature of having this many plants. 
but uh, I haven't seen any larger butterfly. We've got some crazy variegated plants and tins for sure. Lots of oversized one gallons. So there'll be a lot of oversized ones. One of the fun things about open house, a lot of those things will be priced pretty you know, low. So you'll be able to get some big plants. I know last, last spring, there were a lot of people carrying out six foot, one gallon Sengu Kakus, and those were $35. So you can get some good deals on some big plants at Oak Mouse for sure. Uh, I know a lot of those Sengu Kakus probably got moving. There's some massive Twombly's in ones right now. Uh, there's some massive uh, Geisha Gone Wild in ones. A, a little bit of everything. There's some massive, uh, really good size Ryusins in one gallons. So there's definitely a ton of oversized. I'm not even scratching the surface. That's just a few I'm thinking of off the top of my head. I walk by today. There's a ton of oversized ones. So viburnum moonlit lace, moonlit lace is coming on the Fun Flower Friday today. That's a viburnum that's deer resistant, drought resistant, disease resistant, shiny glossy foliage, some large uh, blooms to that as well. And we've also got Osmanthus heterophyllus goshiki, the variegated fragrant tea olive. Uh, that's an excellent plant. It goes in a lot of Japanese maple gardens. I mean, there's not many Japanese maple gardens I've been to that I often don't see some different Osmanthus heterophyllus, and Goshiki is one of the ones that just complements it so well, some of that white speckled variegation. Oh, super great colors. Uh, I want to reiterate, we will not actually be touring Hillstone Arboretum this time. Uh, there is some construction going on in there, so that garden won't be open. Our parents' garden on Maplewood Knoll will be open, and there'll be over 300 cultivars in that garden. Um, you'll be able to see that. We do have a little bit of frost damage still from the spring. You'll be able to see how well things were recovered uh, we did a video on some frost damage. I actually did a short yesterday updating on the germane gyration and the dark straw, and they look completely normal by now. So you'll kind of get an idea of what things look like in a bad frost year for us, because I would say this is one of our worst frost years in a while, but I think the gardens look phenomenal still. They, they've really recovered. They look amazing. Uh, we'll be doing a guided tour of that at some point during the day. I think we'll have that later in the day around 3, um, but we won't be doing the Hillstone Arboretum tour this time just because of some construction. We do have signs up on Maplewood Knoll that say road work in progress. Uh, my mom talked to them, and they said they will not be doing construction on Monday. So bear with us if there's any weirdness going on on Maplewood Knoll that's out of our control. Uh, but there, there may be some construction on that road. Shouldn't dampen traffic or have any issue with us over here at the main nursery. So, guys, we've got Azalea Lilacina coming back. That's one of those southern indica azaleas. Those are some of the most heat-tolerant azaleas that's out there. They get some nice sizes to it. Lilacina can get some really nice shades of lavender with white on the blooms themselves. Uh, then, uh, as our other thing for uh, one of our last items getting listed on this week's Fun Flower Friday is Gardenia Buttons. That's a really dwarf, compact, fragrant Cape Jasmine. Those gardenias, they're just extremely fragrant. And this being a dwarf, that's going to be one that adds a lot of that smell interest in that smaller space. Guys, we're super excited to have you here again. It's one of our favorite times to open up. I mean, we didn't get to do this for two years because of uh, the pandemic. So uh, it's special to us to have people here again. And uh, due to our volume we ship, we can't always do it. It's a huge undertaking to pull all the orders. We'll have a staff here pulling orders during the day while people are shopping. So it's a big undertaking to get this underway. We've got about 30 staff members here at Mr. Maple, and we'll probably have at least 20 people on hand on Memorial Day just here to help. So there'll be a lot going on. Actually, we'll have over 30 because we'll have a lot of people who aren't regularly here. So we'll have over 30 people here to help you, whether that's with parking, with carrying your plants, uh, however we can assist you. Again, get your number. And I want to reiterate to people with the numbers, uh, you can't put them on the plant and then leave the number out. So once you put the number on your uh, tag, make sure to get that to one of our staff members. And with the Satsuki Azaleas, you just have to go around and check and see if they've got any big trunks on them. Um, a lot of them have two or three Satsuki Azaleas in there. So if you wait during the right times, you could probably divide some of those one gallons out. There's some big ones. I mean, there's some, there's some nice and thick ones. We have developed a new area here at our nursery. We have some bays. And so uh, there's some things not even in greenhouses. There's some bays right as soon as you get to the nursery. Kind of for some of y'all that come in really early and park along the side of the road, right along the road as you're coming in, we've got those bays. We call it Area 31. And Area 31 has a lot of our azaleas right now and some of the other non-maple items. Um, it's behind the greenhouses, behind where the 10 gallons were. 
And so it's a whole new area to go shop and check out some plants. And there's tons and tons of azaleas back there. Yeah, and there's just going to be a ton of cool plants. Uh, if there's anything we can assist you with, grab one of us. We'll be glad to show you where it's at. We'll have people assigned to different areas. So we may say, hey, uh, my man is over here in the house with the orange hat. Just go right to him. He'll take you right to where those bronze age are. So we can help get you to things if there's something specific you're looking for. Uh, some things we may not know because there's a million things. Uh, Tim's pretty good at remembering most things, but there's a lot of plants. I mean, we're talking a couple hundred thousand plants available at Mr. Maple Festival. So we won't be able to find every single thing every time. But if you take some time and shop around some of these greenhouses, there's some absolute gold in there, guys. There's some cooler stuff uh, and a lot of things that people have been waiting on that we'll have available. I really don't know where I would point people if someone said they wanted some rare, interesting plants. Over because, there in the nursery. <laughs> because every greenhouse you go in, there's going to be something pretty cool and pretty awesome for the most part. I mean, you run around and you're going to find something that's unusual. A lot of the plants that Matt even mentioned will be, they're in different areas and different parts of the nursery. And some of them are in multiple parts. Um, so a lot of cool plants. Again, many of the items like Nemo, they're going to be one per person. Where things like the... Um, Firefly, you know, you may be able to pick up a few more just simply because we have larger numbers of that one. Yeah, just be courteous to the other people here. Uh, if you know people are looking for stuff, just try to try to be courteous to your fellow collector there. Uh, and I think most people are. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be a fun event. And uh, there's so many cool things. That you won't miss out here because there'll be something for everybody. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things around. So just keep looking around. There's so much we've brought up. There's so much ready that we haven't had ready before here. And uh, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a fun day. And hopefully we can shock and awe you a little bit with some of the fun surprises we have out here. Yeah, if you have any other questions, we'll we'll let you throw them in the chat. We'll start wrapping it up here in a minute. But if you have any other plant questions, uh, you can throw those right there in the chat. Um, we should have a, a really nice team here together, though. Um, Osakazuki. Do you know if we have any Osakazuki out right now? There are some Osakazuki here for the open house. There's not There's not many things we won't have, to be honest with you guys. I mean, if there's a maple you're looking for, there's a good chance we're going to have it. We'll probably have it in stock at our Memorial Day open house. We're going to have, I would say, a decent number of Mayday, a decent number of Mystic. Not a huge amount, but there'll be some around. And... Uh, we got some sets in the works too for you guys online. Don't don't fill out of there. We're gonna have some incredible sets of Mayday. We've been beefing up numbers on that. Uh, I would say at some point this probably this summer we're gonna have a very sizable set hit the website, and uh, and of, of Mayday and of Mystic. So should be making those a little bit easier to get for you uh, you people overpaying on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we also have uh, we also have Naka Komodo weeping hitting the ten at ten soon. Just a little preview for you guys. So some of you guys overpaying. I saw one go. It wasn't even the right Nakakomoto weeping, but I saw one go on eBay. 52, 50 something bids for like 450 bucks. I'm like, guys, first off, it was the wrong plant. But second off, you know it's coming back to Mr. Maple. And I promise you, all the ones we're listing, they'll be big numbers, look better than that one. <laughs> I feel bad for whoever bid $450 on a $40 one gallon because those are coming back for sure. And the seedling was a seedling from the lineage of Naka right, Komodo right. weeping. It wasn't the grafted Naka Komodo weeping. So it was a seedling from it. So it was, uh, the guy didn't even really get what he thought he was getting. We It was a seedling that someone had purchased here at the nursery and had someone else propagate, and I know the whole story behind the plant. But Bruce Burton asked if we take wives in exchange for Japanese maples. Uh, well, <laughs> we're both married, but if they can pull weeds, hey, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Where did bring the your family members. If, you, if your husband gets distracted or lost, we'll have them pull weeds. If your wife gets uh, annoyed with you, hey, we'll send them to watering or, or uh, organizing. We got we got lots of jobs for your spouses or significant others who are bored. So, uh, Andy, you said where did the filigrees go? I think there may be at this open house red filigree, green filigree, pink filigree, and there may also filigree be rouge. one filigree rouge sitting around in one of the houses as well. So we got the filigrees. We got the covered. filigrees covered for the open house. Yeah, and uh, to reiterate, guys, we will have the groovy grease wagon here serving uh, breakfast and lunch um, till I think at least two or three in that time frame. So if you're here early, there'll be breakfast here for you. We'll be providing water, 
So we'll have cold waters here if you need some water around the nursery. Uh, but we will have uh, refreshments available through uh, the Groovy Grease Wagon for purchase. So make sure to support them. Uh, we, don't, we don't make anything off the food trucks, but we uh, we enjoy having them here. So that gives you a reason to stick around longer and shop with us. So it also makes it a lot of fun. We don't have to bring food for the employees and we'll all be partaking there in that food truck. I've heard it's really good, by the way. I'm excited to try it. And Colby Trio asked, is the red panda still red? Matt and I were out looking at a red panda yesterday and it still had red color to it. And it's been in leaf since February. Mm-hmm. No, it still wasn't like that deep, deep, deep red. But it's probably about to start putting on some summer flushes, which will be deep red again. We won't have Red Panda at Open House this year. Uh, sorry to disappoint you. We've decided to keep building numbers on it. It's always a numbers thing for us. We want to make sure we have a good enough set to uh, meet demand when we launch it. Uh, we're getting close. It's getting really close. So I would say one more graph uh, on that, and we probably should be pretty good to have a decent size release. Um, and, and we may decide just to release some later in the season. We'll see. Uh, I know we're, our numbers are getting decent, but uh, – I think we could use a few more before it hits the market. Uh, phenomenal red. It's it, For us, there's a lot of great reds out there. Bazinga is another good one. Uh, for us, Red Panda has just simply held its color the longest and been the darkest red. So we typically go through several thousand Makawa seedlings every year, and uh, we pick out our favorites. Uh, Nemo's going to be here at Open House in smaller numbers. Uh, really phenomenal red-orange. Uh, it's actually a seedling that Dr. Murray found and gave to us to evaluate. We have an upcoming podcast with Dr. Murray. You guys, you're going to want to check that one out. It's going to be phenomenal. We are doing a historical deep dive on the 1700s Japanese maple list with Dr. Murray. He's a customer of ours who uh, really introduced us, you know, about 15 years ago, maybe even longer than that. Gosh, I mean, I've been doing this a minute now probably closer to 20 years ago, Dr. Murray came up to us at a trade show uh, just out at a farmer's market, really, at a, at a farmer's market show, and talked to us about the 1700 Japanese maple list. And so he was kind of our entryway into getting excited about that. And uh, so we wanted to bring him back in. He's a good friend of ours, knowledgeable guy. Also, he was good friends with Peter Gregory and a lot of famous maple people. So he's been digging around in maples for forever and just lives here in Asheville. And uh, what a fun guy. We're going to be kind of making that one a passion project. It's it's it's, an, it's a podcast that's taken us a little bit longer to get done just because of the amount of research that goes into it. I think you guys are going to really enjoy that one, though. It's an upcoming work of art we'll try to put together and have it there on the Mr. Maple Show and podcast. So stay tuned for that one if you're a history of mis, of uh, if you're a fan of maple history. Uh, asking if we can pick up Tuesday morning. Uh, in limited numbers, we can definitely do that. Uh, we'll be super busy that day, but we can have some set things set back for you guys that are traveling. Uh, we will, won't will be open at the nursery at all. Yeah, we'll be completely closed at the nursery on Tuesday morning. Uh, it'd be best for most people to pick them up on Monday because Tuesday morning we kind of have a full schedule of things we have to get done on Tuesday morning. So the nursery itself won't be available Tuesday morning at all, uh, but you know, in limited numbers we can do something. Uh, so, uh, if you have any other questions, throw them in the chat, guys, we look forward to showing you around the, uh, Maplewood gardens. Uh, we've got a, a big, big setup of plants out there. Uh, Rebecca asking if red flamingo will be available. You see any of those around Tim? Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen any of the red flamingo. I know we have a set in the works. I don't think they're quite ready yet. We'll have that one again on Mr. Maple.com. Uh, I looked at some that weren't quite ready. I don't think we have any up that are ready. But uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> I've, I've seen so many plants in the last week trying to get ready for this. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we look forward to showing you around, guys. Um, there's going to be a ton of cool plants there. I think we'll probably go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always put them in the comment section below. And... Uh, We'll be, uh, we'll be really excited to see a lot of your smiling faces in person Monday morning. That's Again, that's going to be Monday, Memorial Day. Uh, that's 529 of 2023 if you're watching this later. Uh, guys, we're going to be open from 8 to 4. We will have a hard cut off at 4. We appreciate you making us part of your Memorial Day plans. I know a lot of you guys have bought plane tickets. I know a lot of you guys have drove across the country to see us, and that's not lost on us. We hope to make this you know, worth your time to be here, and we're excited to be open and show you guys around and just share our passion for Japanese maples. So, you know, come grab Tim or I, Brian, Sean, Jody, all of our staff here, our wives, just say hello, let us know who you are 
and uh, let us know. Put a face with the name. Some of you guys we might not have seen in person before. You might be a longtime mail order customer, and uh, you might recognize Tim and I because we put our faces on camera every day. But we love to put a face, uh, you know, with the customer too. So come up and let us know. Say hey, you know, this is me. I've been shopping with you since 2010. And, guys, we love that stuff. We love to see you, and it really makes a lot of fun for us, uh, you know, to get to have that personal contact. Since we're a mail-order business, this is our day to get to be people people and get out and enjoy uh, the camaraderie of Japanese maples. And so it looks almost like light growth, or maybe there's an extra eye in there and the like. Um, but they asked, do we graft or grow our own Japanese maples from seed or grow our own Japanese maples from seed? Check out our video. we got a whole video on grafting Japanese maples and how to grow Japanese maples from seed if that's what you're looking for. That's how we found Hot Blonde. That's how we found Dragon Master. So we uh, definitely do quite a bit of that ourselves. It's how we found Red Panda. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of that that we do here at Mr. Maple. We're hoping to develop an even larger kind of research and development area. So we're working on a new space here near the nursery uh, that can kind of become eventually a tissue culture lab, a rooted cuttings area, a grafting uh, facility, and just kind of a little research and development area we can play around with some different ideas, get a little bit more mad scientists with it, start doing some plant experiments, some of that fun stuff we like to do. If you haven't already, go check out the Sue Weegriff podcast. That's got some next level mad scientists plant information in it. So that kind of stuff we would love to have a little bit more space to do here. We are always constrained by space. I mean, one year Tim and I grew, gosh, like 400 pounds of cultivar seed. Uh, it did take up the entire nursery. <laughs> this is when we were much smaller in like maybe like 2012. Well, I would say it took up, uh, out of at the time we had uh, eight greenhouses with product in them and probably eight greenhouses with seedlings in them. So we've had to kind of dial that back a little bit. We can't use all of our space for the mad scientist experiments and, and all that stuff. But it, we're looking to get more room so that we can do more of that again. And we're looking at building a facility where eventually we can be tissue culture in some of these unique um, things in person, especially some of these native azaleas and things like that. So that's something we're, we're doing here at Mr. Maple. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, you can always reach out to us too. It's something we're very interested in. Uh, here's another little thing. Tim and I are actually going to be doing a trip coming up soon uh, to uh, Oregon. We're going to be touring around with Talon Buckholtz, who's inviting us to uh, come out and personally uh, hang out with them a little bit. We're taking Corbin. Uh, we're taking the new cameras. Tim spent some money on some cameras, believe it or not. Mr. Cheapo over here spent some big bucks on some cameras. We got some we got some really nice camera equipment, guys. Like, I'm talking movie-quality cameras. So we've upgraded our cameras a little bit here for uh, the channel. And uh, we're going to be doing some tours with Talon Buckholtz. We're definitely going to be touring uh, Talon's gardens. And uh, we're going to be touring his nursery. Uh, you, many of you may know he's retiring soon, so we couldn't miss this opportunity to kind of just spend some personal time with him and check out a few of his favorite gardens in that area. So Tim and I will be flying over to the West Coast to see him soon. If you have suggestions, uh, especially for really outrageous private gardens, like I know a lot of places to see, uh, you know, in the uh, the Oregon area, uh, and I've got a lot of uh, great customers and friends out there. Uh, We recently just hired uh, an Oregon State grad, a horticulture grad here too, so we've got a lot of good suggestions for things uh, to go see in that area. But if you have private gardens that either maybe you're watching and your private gardens are really cool for maples, reach out to us. We, we may come and shoot something at your garden. We're looking for some more private gardens to add to our uh, kind of Mr. Maple tour of Oregon we're going to be doing. Tim and I will also be speaking at the Maple Society meeting this October in Seattle. So uh, same thing goes for there. If you have really nice gardens or you're something you want us to go specifically and video in that Seattle area, we'll be taking a podcast crew as well as a film crew with us to Seattle. Uh, so be thinking about that. If there's people you like for us to interview in that region, uh, that may be something we can uh, do. You can put that in the comments section below. So we just had Bruce uh, Burton ask about a shishigashiri he's had for two years. It's only 15 inches tall in a pot. Uh, it's really small. Should I repot it with soil and fresh pine bark? Well, I'd be careful about that too. Sometimes... Plants like Shishigashira can be really slow in their growth habits. Um, it could just be that it's the slower growing variety, but at the same time, sometimes a tree will just sit for a year or two and then really take off and get some growth going the next year. And, you know, it just depends on the tree. I mean, you can go through a set of Japanese maples, and there may be some in the set that are much bigger than the other ones. 
And sometimes that's just a, a case of just different roots on each different plant, basically because they're grafted, they're on different root systems. Um, but, you know, that plant will often take up and then continue on and get the very similar growth rate as Shishigashira typically would. So I'd give it some fertilizer, some liquid fertilizer, try to encourage some growth. Um, but other than that, you know, I'd probably just give some wait till next year, but I'd give it some uh, slow release fertilizer in the early spring as it's starting to leaf out, try to encourage that plant. I wouldn't do much repotting because you're just going to, unless that pot is holding too much water, that's the only thing that would cause me to uh, repot that soil, especially if it's just slower growing. Michael James asks, uh, you've probably answered this before, but do you lime ginkgos more than once a year? Well, that first year that I did it, I used pelletized garden lime, and I actually did it in spring, summer, and fall, about two to three tablespoons around a one-gallon size, and I had great growth. So it's not something that you can typically overdo too much. If you want to do it in spring and summer, I say go for it and fall. Uh, but, yeah, you don't want to put a whole bag around it. You know, you want to make sure that you're putting out enough that it's breaking down around it, not just you know, piling up around the plant, but, uh, in limited amounts. Yeah, you can do it for sure. Any time of the year, spring, summer, or fall. Uh, he also asked if you can see bloody talons in person. I only have about five of those currently. So I have the original graph sent to me that, uh, the first graph talon let leave the nursery. I should say. I thought that, I thought they were talking about talon. We're going to go see bloody talons in person. <laughs> right. Talon buckles. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we'll, we'll take you to talons place. Uh, he did send us a rather large gift of a like six gallon bloody talon. So I do have a really nice one. Uh, I won't have it anywhere around at open house because somebody will carry it off and somebody won't know that it's not available. So we will be grafting from that one. Uh, one of Talon's last introductions, Bloody Talon. It will Talons. be locked away in Area 51. Yeah, we'll have that one pretty locked away just so that it doesn't get carried off. Otherwise, somebody will... Sometimes it's good not to tempt. Yeah, right. This one's available, I promise. Uh, so, yeah, we appreciate guys. Um, oh, Edgar Garcia. Yeah, I actually already reached out to Edgar Garcia in Seattle. Uh, told him I would love to come by and shoot some stuff in his gardens. I've even seen some shots that that look amazing. Uh, if you haven't already, go join that Mr. Maple Friends group uh, on Facebook. There's some really good pictures in there of, of different gardens. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you being part of our live chat today. We're up to 58 right now. It's a, it's a great number for live for us. And we've been growing our channel like crazy, guys. I've actually had some, some uh, sponsors that have been buying ads on our channel. It's been kind of crazy for us, the growth lately. We In 15 days, we went from 1,700 excuse me, 17,000 subscribers to 18,000 subscribers. Uh, in 15 days, that was just unprecedented growth. Uh, we'll be closing on 20,000 here soon. I'm sure by the time we get to 19, we'll come up with a really good giveaway for you guys for 20,000. We'll come up with something fun we'll be launching again. Uh, we should be hitting 19,000 very soon, which is just insane to me. And thanks so much for tuning in. If you have other questions, drop them in the chat. I think we're going to go ahead and end it there. Uh, we're going to have a really good Fun Flyer Friday dropping for you guys at 10 a.m. So make sure to check out the different plants we have on Fun Flyer Friday. Tim went over them here today, uh, but you can check out the pictures and everything on our website. Those will all be live at 10 a.m. Eastern. We're here in North Carolina, so I always let people know Eastern. Some people message me and they say they're not on the website, and it's it's way past 10. Well, we're, we're East Coast, so you know, be checking there. Uh, so that's when everything loads for us. Hey, we just got one more question I'm going to throw in there. All right. Steve asked about his, he has a lot of fun, uh, black flies and gnats around with his Japanese maples. One, you've probably got an area that might be staying too wet that's causing a lot of those gnats and stuff to be in there. So be careful, make sure you're not over watering and make sure your plants aren't sitting in water. That can cause a lot more fungus gnats than anything. Insecticidal soaps with your best friend when it comes to killing the black flies and gnats. Um, you know, the least you do, the better. Often people overreact and put something stronger out there, which will burn your Japanese maples. I would do my best to make sure you're not overdoing it. And if you do end up having to use a harsher chemical, use one on one specific plant and test to make sure it's safe on that Japanese maple before you put it on the rest. Michael James asked about Mr. Maple hats and Maple Mafia hats. We will have Mr. Maple show hats that say Mr. Maple show with the hot blonde leaf. We'll have classic MrMaple.com hats, tons of colors in these, more than you've ever seen before. I mean, we've probably got 50 colors in these, no joke. And for the first time available for purchase, we'll have some of these crazy Maple Mafia trucker hats. You've probably seen me rocking these in a few of our videos. Uh, our old eBay name was the Maple Mafia, but now I'm calling kind of our fan group, the people that subscribe here 
our daily uh, people who are in the chat all the time. You guys are the Maple Mafia. It's a fun way to use that term. And uh, join the Maple Mafia with your official Maple Mafia tacky trucker hat. Tim said there's no way he's wearing them. I rock them all the time. I even got the gold oak leaves over here. <laughs> I love the funny trucker hats and the uh, Maple Mafia. My, my design idea for this was the Metallica logo meets Hulk Hogan colors. That, that's what I wanted when I was in, inspired to design the Maple Mafia I, logo. So I might wear a trucker hat, but what I, these leaves, this is just <laughs> over the top. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's over the top. It just doesn't fit my style. And that's the reason I'm not going to wear that. the guy that matches every aspect of his I mean, he's he's got matching underwear to his uh, <laughs> Mr. Maple hat, socks, shoes, all the way up. Hey, I'm just glad that you've you've started matching since the since the in the garden of Bryce Lane days where you'd wear the neon red with the neon blue and the neon green hat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I appreciate you hopping in the chat today. You guys make it so much fun. And uh, we appreciate you. We look so much forward to spending time with you guys in person that can make it to open house. And don't worry if you can't make it this time. We'll be doing more open houses. We'll probably look for some fall times to uh, to have some open hours again. And uh, we just really appreciate you guys being part of what we're doing here and supporting our channel, supporting our nursery, and allowing us to grow and provide you know, Japanese maple-related content. So, hey, guys, take care. God bless. Have a great day.